In today's video, I want to make a follow-up to the mask angle video that I made a couple of weeks ago where I explained what a mask angle is, and now I put it to the test to see how a mask angle actually affects the performance of your RTK equipment in the field. So to very briefly set up the test on what I did today, there was a couple of different things that we are going to look at, that we measured, and we're going to see how that affects our performance. So what we did for our test parameters is very similar to what we've done in our repeatability and our averaging points video. I used the same setup I had on the fence there with the receiver sitting there and instead of just looking at the number of observations or how accurate my position is I also changed a, another variable here and that was my mask angle so I started at zero degrees mask angle and we went all the way to 45 degrees in increments of five so we had 5 10 15 20 so on and so forth and we're gonna look at and see how that affected our RTK performance so we're gonna look at the satellite count to see how it affects our satellite count if that affects the performance of our RTK because there's kind of a myth going around that you know as we get more and more and more satellites and more and more constellations with our RTK solutions that we kind of can start to ignore some of the fundamental parameters and the fundamental readouts that your RTK has and that we can ignore them in our RTK solution and that it doesn't even matter anymore we can almost turn them off and forget about it but as we'll see later on in the video there is a point where we kind of need to reconsider those fundamentals and look at those numbers so we're gonna look at the satellite count we're gonna look at the PDOP and we're gonna look at our repeatability to see if the satellite count and our PDOP actually affects the real performance that you probably care about in the field and that's how accurate your position is. So let's get into it here and first dive into our satellite count. The first stat we're going to look at here is our satellite count. Kind of exactly what I expect. So that 0, 5, and 10 we saw effectively no change. But after 10 degrees, so once we start hitting 15, 20, 25, we kind of see this exponential decay in the number of satellites we see. And because I observed it over the whole course of the day, this is actually pretty repeatable. So we kind of go from all the way at 30 satellites at 10 degrees, all the way down to under 10 satellites once we're hitting 45 degrees. And in fact, I tried to test all the way up to 50 degrees, but I had so few satellites, I was no longer able to generate a fixed solution and couldn't calculate a, a position in fact. So it was completely useless. And over that angle, we could get no solution at all. So if for whatever reason you decided you wanted to go to that extreme of a mask angle, unless you're at the equation, equator, you're probably going to have a pretty tough time getting any sort of results, which also means if you're in a deep pit mine where you only have a tiny sliver of the sky available, that would explain why you can't get a GPS solution. Now, the question is, does this satellite count affect our real world position, the position that we're calculating and the accuracy on our RTK receiver? And in order to understand that, I'm just going to go over to the whiteboard briefly to explain what PDOPs are. So in order to understand how the accuracy of our solution can be affected and what could be causing any change in the accuracy of our solution as we change our mask angle, we need to understand one of the fundamental statistics that your receiver gave you. And if you're an old school surveyor, you probably had to use it a bunch back in the day. But as the technology has gotten newer and newer, we get more and more constellations and more and more satellites available to us. We've kind of started to ignore it. And there's a bit of an urban myth that has gone around where you can effectively completely ignore it. And as I'm going to show you later on in this video, that's no longer the case based on the information we generated from our test and that is your PDOP value. Now PDOP stands for position dilution of precision and it's a measurement of the geometry of your satellite. So there's two components of it. One is your VDOP which is the vertical dilution of precision and one is the HDOP which is the horizontal dilution of precision and both of these combine to make your PDOP value and effectively you are going to have a high PDOP value so PDOP value that is very high if all of your satellites are clustered in one area of the sky. So if all of them are generated like this, I'm going to have a high PDOP value. Now I'm going to have a low PDOP value if my satellites are well spread out. So instead of having them all clustered in one area, if I have them kind of spread out all over the sky, I'm going to have a low PDOP value. Now I want a low PDOP value because the more spread out my satellites are, the better I am able to triangulate my position, giving me a more consistent, precise, and accurate position. So we want to have a low PDOP value. Now for those of you that have clued in, if my mask angle is very narrow, I'm going to have a high PDOP value because the only available satellites are all clustered very close together. So if I have a low mask angle, like a 5 or 10 one, I'm going to be able to access more, they're more spread out, and I'm going to get a better result. So with that in mind, what we're going to do now is look and see how our PDOP value 
is affected with our mask angle here. So what you can see here is as our mask angle increases and as it is, you know, going from zero to 45 degrees, our PDOT value is also increasing and it's increasing exponentially, which makes sense. As we increase our mask angle, the essentially the area of the sky that we have available to us for satellites is shrinking dramatically. So our PDOT value is gonna start racing and up and in fact, at 45 degrees, we're at a PDOP of over four and a half. And if you look at your RTK statistics in open sky, it's generally under one. Now I'm not getting into the math of how you calculate PDOP. There are a number of wonderful articles. I'll link to one or two down below on how to do that. But for our purposes, we're gonna see here that once we cross that kind of three to four PDOP level, that measurement of three to four for our PDOP, we're gonna see a dramatic increase in the error of a single shot observation. So we've now seen so our satellite count decreases and our mask angle increases, our PDOP is also going to increase. So how does that actually affect our accuracy and repeatability? So let's take a look here first at the northing. So in our horizontal measurement here, we're normally expecting around an eight millimeter standard deviation. So just like that repeatability test I did the other day, we saw great repeatability with the 631 in open sky, all the way up to kind of a PDOP of three, we were seeing a standard deviation of under five millimeters over the course of the day. Better than the spec. I wouldn't expect anything better than eight millimeters, but that's what we saw for the course of the day. But for that 45 degree mask angle, where our PDOP was around four and a half, our standard deviation on a single point observation was over 13 millimeters. That's enormous, but it makes sense. We've dramatically reduced the number of satellites we have available and the geometry of them is pretty horrendous. And a similar story is told in the Easting. Again, for a PDOP of three, we're seeing under five millimeters of repeatability, exactly as we expect. But as soon as we cross that threshold into the three, that four range, we're seeing 40 millimeters standard deviation, but in the Easting. <laughs> And finally, when we look at our height error, it's in the exact same story. We should expect nothing better than kind of that 15 millimeter range for our height. We're seeing at that PDOP of four, 160 millimeters, so 16 centimeters in error. So we only have 10 satellites. Our PDOP's very high. We're gonna see very poor performance. So now that I've bored you half to death with all of these numbers, all of these statistics, and I'm gonna write a lengthier article better explaining these so that you can take a look at the data yourself. What would I actually recommend for you in the field? What's something you can take away from this video? Well, it would be these three things that I would recommend. The first one is I would set your mask angle at about 10 or 15 degrees. Dealer's choice, either one will give you approximately the same performance. And the reason for that is at 10 to 15 degrees, that is effectively the mask angle introduced by the terrain in any real world environment. You're not gonna see much of a difference if you go from zero to 15 degrees in the number of satellites or your PDOP. And if you stick it in that 10 to 15 degree range, you're gonna reduce some of that multi-path effect that you're gonna see at that zero to 10 degree range from satellite signals. My second recommendation is if you start to see your PDOP value, well your satellite count decreasing and your PDOP value increasing is increase the number of observations that you're taking in a solution. This will improve your repeatability. And then finally is if you see your PDOP creeping over three, it's creeping up into the four range, is either come back at a later date when the satellite geometries change to give you a better solution, or two, increase the number of observations that you're recording that will improve your repeatability. And the reason for that is in the video linked right here. And finally, if you have any questions, this video was inspired by one of our commenters, Gary Bunk here, lovely comment. And he asked us about mask angles and how it affects performance. So if you have any ideas on stuff you wanna see about RTK, leave them down in the comments below and we'll try to make a video just like this for you.